This is Dominic Corey here for Red Carpet Report. We're out at Pasadena for the FX Television Critics Association press tour. Legion, you've, you've been working in the X-Men universe for a long time. Legion sort of trod its own path in a lot of ways. Was it always, yeah, was it always the goal to do something completely different to everything else we knew about X-Men adaptations? Yes, um, you know, after the third X-Men, and as we got into uh, X-Men First Class, I realized that we better make each movie individual in a different tone or else people in the audience were going to go like, I've seen this. So First Class was supposed to be a Bond, was a Bond movie. The Wolverines ending up with a, a Western and Logan. Um, Deadpool, a comedy. Gambit was going to be a heist movie turned comedy. So absolutely. And the only way to really do television for us was to make sure that we kept along that line and certainly when I went to Noah Hawley with would you like to do an X-Men show and he came up with this I knew you know we had we had uh, reached that goal a hundredfold I love that it is so different because you you haven't seen it before it is within the X-Men canon but it is so extremely unique you you, you very accurately described a lot of the other X-Men uh, adaptations there how do you describe Legion? It's so hard to pin down as a show. I, it is really hard. It is sort of a visual explosion of uh, character over plot and uh, a hallucinogenic style. How's that? <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. You managed to not use the term psychedelic, so I'm impressed. <laughs> I got close. <laughs> um, what, what's gained from, from knowing that this end is coming and, and, and being able to anticipate it in terms of writing the season? Um, well, it gives us somewhere to go. You know, it, it 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 gives more important direction to the past two seasons, and because the question was, because David Holler Legion is a famous character within the X Men canon and a famous villain and schizophrenic, so you never knew what he was going to do. This, um, what we tried to do going in was, oh, is he going to be bad or good? Love is in here. Can love make him good? Can love stop him from turning evil? Well, guess what? He turned evil <laughs> because he messed up with his love, and that's how he left last season. So this season, he's uh, reaching a goal, and while I believe he's trying to fix the situation, he is becoming more of the villain than he ever was before. Have you learned any lessons about adaptation working on on it, on, on Legion, just because, as you, you say, it's like nothing that's come before? Has it kind of opened your mind to the possibilities? Well, yes. I mean, it opened my mind. Yes, we can do other characters, but it has to be, I think, in a, in a unique and different way, again. Um, it opened my mind because of the, the nature of the story. I've never filmed this way, you know, so um, free and stylistically um, able to just let the camera roam if it feels like roaming to find that one shot that we need. You can't always do that on a movie. You certainly can't do it on a network. So, um, yeah, I think we can do it again. We've talked about it. We did talk about spinning off something from the Legion world. But we'll see. Um, Jeff talked about how much, uh, you know, obviously a lot of this comes from the comics, but Noah also brought in a lot of the story himself. Yeah, so what, has that taught you anything about sort of how closely you need to adhere to the comics to tell an X-Men story? No, we sort of, you know, right off the bat when Brian and I were doing the first X-Men, in terms of um, costumes, Cyclops' visor, Wolverine's look, I mean, we were acutely aware that the fans were watching us, and I remember at one point, um, Harry Knowles was the only, you know, guy out there who was very, super, super important. And I remember um, Brian jumped in my chair, um, and we were in my office, and wrote Harry Knowles a letter to the fans saying, look, this is now a movie. You can't have, you know, people running around in yellow and blue spandex at night. They have to hide into the night. So please allow us our dramatic interpretation of it. So from that point on, I realized that, that yes, you have to keep the guts of the X-Men, but tell it in the way that you want, that it needs to be told. And if it's differently, great. I'll, I'll never forget when those first photos showed up on Ain't It Cool yeah. uh, from the X-Men. Yeah. Um, do, do you feel a continuity from, from that film right through all the adaptations to, to Legion? 
Yes. Now, I, w I have not been involved in uh, Dark Phoenix or New Mutants, although New Mutants was my idea. I stepped back. Simon Kinberg took over, and Apocalypse I, did, I wasn't involved in. So, um, but from the ones that I did, to Legion, yes, it's all within because we spun off, you know, Deadpool, and we were going to, we were going to spin off Gambit, and you know, there are there were many characters. We were going to do an all female X Men story. So yes, there are there are many stories to tell within the canon. It's like sixty years for God's sakes. Yeah, thank you so much, Lauren Shuladonna. Have a great day. Thank you. Cheers. you too. Cheers. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, give us the old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And uh, put in the comments what your favorite TV show is. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, this has been Dominic Corey for Red Carpet Report.